cartoon voice casting in American cartoons? Should it reflect the racial diversity of the characters being played? Is this even a topic anyone is interested in discussing? Is anyone actually watching this? Don't answer that. I don't know if I can handle that kind of rejection. Yeah, pretty sure that's how that works. Anyway, I've noticed this debate pop up from time to time, and frankly, I don't get the controversy. You don't see people in Japan complaining about the lack of European voice actors in Attack on Titan. It's simply understood and accepted that the cast members aren't playing themselves. Heck, for younger male characters, they don't even stick with their corresponding gender. Of the four main male characters in The Promised Neverland, only one is voiced by a male voice actor. Naruto is female, so is Goku, on the inside. But, at the same time, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with wanting characters to be voiced by the voice actors who most accurately reflect them visually. It certainly makes sense on a symbolic level, even if no one sees it. I'm actually surprised there are still shows casting white actors in minority roles. It makes me question how liberal Hollywood actually is. Not that there's anything wrong with being liberal. I myself am. Oh, right. I'm a disembodied voice. My race, age, and whatever else aren't important to this channel because they're not relevant to what I'm doing. Just like the race of a professional voice actor doesn't impact his or her ability to voice a fictional character. That's where my issue with this debate lies, in this idea that actors need to embody their characters in a very literal way in order to properly play them. That someone who doesn't share an animated character's race isn't going to be able to understand their specificities. I don't think that's true. Black people, Asians, Hispanics, they don't all share the secret information no one else can comprehend. It's not like white people don't know what racism is. And that's assuming a cartoon decides to tackle those sorts of issues, which they generally don't. Most animated films and shows that contain a diverse cast of characters are entirely colorblind. Race does exist, but it's not addressed. There are no specificities to worry about. Furthermore, sharing the same race as a character doesn't mean an actor can actually relate to them. Take Mulan, for example, the 1998 Disney animated classic. Ming Na Wen, an actress of Chinese descent, voiced the title character, but being ethnically Chinese doesn't mean she's culturally Chinese. She moved to the US when she was four. That's why she has essentially no accent. Realistically, how much of her ancestry did she tap into to capture the essence of Mulan? I'm guessing almost none of it. That's a problem with insisting that actors need to properly embody characters. You can't just stop at race. We're more than the color of our skin. There's also economic status, politics, upbringing. All of these have just as much bearing on who we are today. So if you're going to focus so heavily on one, shouldn't you also incorporate these others? The answer, as far as I can tell, is that producers really don't care about any of these. They've just come to realize that it looks good in Hollywood. It's about appearances. That's why no one batted an eye at Dante Bosco's casting as Jake Long. Sure, he's Filipino, not Chinese, but you know, Asians all look the same. Jokes guys, just jokes. Okay, let's address a couple of the major recent examples of voice actors resigning because of this whitewashing issue. Starting with Kristen Bell's character in Central Park. She's supposed to be of mixed race, while the actress herself is decidedly not. Yeah, this does seem a bit weird. They had to have known they'd get backlash over it, right? Even if her mixed race brother suffers the same issue. Huh. Sorry to say this, but full white or full black, neither of these qualifies as mixed race. They're equally incorrect. So is the portrayal of this boy Molly likes by this Filipino actor. Filipinos, man, they keep stealing our good paying job. Where was I? Oh, right, misrepresentation. The problem is, it's kind of this show's thing. Just look at Bitsy, our antagonist, and her servant Helen. They're played by Stanley Tucci and David Diggs, two men, one of whom is black. Basically, I need something that says contempt, but I'm here, so check this out. Right. Actually, Helen, I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad to be here. Let go of me. Why are you talking that way? Anyone else doubt these actors have a deep connection with their characters? The scenes with them feel really off because, obviously, they're voices. But that seems to be part of the joke. I'm fine with that. Yet, it's Kristen Bell's role that takes things too far. I really don't get what people think racially accurate voice actors can bring to a role. They aren't coming up with their own lines. They're reading a script. 
Outside of verbal pauses and inflections, there isn't much they can actually do to make their characters more quote-unquote genuine. There's a reason why so many voice actors deliver pretty mediocre performances in live action. It's far more demanding. In animation, half the work is done by others, if not more. So, half-hearted line deliveries are less noticeable. Okay, let's look at another example, Cleveland Brown from Family Guy. Just this year, Mike Henry stepped down because he felt he couldn't do the character justice and was recast with a black actor. But the new person they got to fill the role seems even less like Cleveland Brown than Mike Henry did. The token black guy in Call of Duty. Keep laughing it up. Ha ha ha. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Azers is a 20-something-year-old black rapper slash YouTube personality who happens to be good at voice impressions. Nuance and understanding have nothing to do with it, and it's not like the show has ever tried to be subtle. At the end of the day, we've got a black actor imitating a white actor imitating an older black character who's nothing like him, with most of the dialogue written by white writers. It's a game of telephone that's unlikely to improve anything but the optics. It's all for show a way for everyone to pat themselves on the back without doing anything substantive. So while I think character representation is important, and we could see more diversity in the writer's room, I also think the reasoning here is flawed. Actors don't need to be anything like their animated counterparts. So what if a white person voicing a Hispanic character has never had someone tell them to go back to where they came from? It's not like every Mexican voice actor has experienced that either. If fears of stereotyping are the concern, then stop trying to get characters to quote-unquote feel like specific minorities. That, by its very nature, is stereotyping, assuming minorities have to be presented in a certain way. Being a certain race doesn't define a person unless they let it. It's descriptive, not prescriptive. You know what I would like to see? Studios recruiting diverse groups of voice actors and giving them diverse character roles to play that largely don't align with their actual races. Give those characters a mix of stereotypical and surprising characteristics. Make race a non-issue in animation so that it might, in turn, trickle up and become a non-issue for future generations. Easy. I think one of the beauties of animation is just how well it can make this transition without coming off as forced. Sure, the characters may represent people, but they aren't actually people. It makes it easier to push the boundaries of what's acceptable to break out of stereotypes that have become overly ingrained in society. Even the most prejudiced among us is going to be more receptive to this blending of character backgrounds in an animated setting, because the odds of comparing the two-dimensional world to past personal interactions drops significantly, while there's a good chance the emotional connections still resonate. This sort of blending helps free us from our assumptions. We may all look different on the outside, but inside we have far more in common than we don't. That realization is important. It connects us. It makes us better people. Yeah, pretty sure that's how that works, right? So enough with these vapid apologies. Cast the person whose voice matches up best with those imagined for the character, regardless of their race. Mix things up. Make it clear that race doesn't matter here because one, actors aren't playing themselves, and two, race shouldn't define us. And if anyone's actual concern is that there aren't enough black, Hispanic, or Asian voice actors landing roles, well, don't be. They're getting work. According to Zipia, a career search website, the racial breakdown is almost identical to that of the US population. Sure, Hispanics are a bit underrepresented, but their percentages are swallowed up by Asians, not whites. So, it's got to be the Filipinos, right? Regardless, minorities are getting hired. It's just not always with characters aligned with their race. Anyone else see the blatant contradiction here? In summary, while I do think that people are making too big a deal of these casting decisions, I also believe making character ethnicities align with their real-world counterparts doesn't hurt anything. Again, if nothing else, it's good PR. It makes people feel like progress is being made to eliminate racism. But that's it. It's a front, an act. It's an additional challenge for producers that does nothing to improve the end product. All that being said, this type of content is new for this channel. I'm trying to broaden my appeal, expand beyond my niche anime spoiler essays, as well as increase the number of videos I can produce. Plus, I do in fact find discussions of this nature interesting. Hopefully, you guys do as well. I'd like to see my subscriber growth return to its main numbers, and not the 30 or so subs I'm getting now. 
1,000 feels so far away. Doesn't help that I've been posting once a month, and that some of those videos have recently been pulled for copyright infringement. Apparently, having 250 clips with an average clip length of 2-3 to three seconds isn't transformative enough. That's another reason why I'm not feeling as excited about making those more in-depth cartoon essays. I can't seem to figure out what the rules are. If my watered-down opinions and weird theories on how to achieve world peace through racially blind writing and casting aren't your thing, please let me know. If it's a big enough issue, I'll try to make adjustments moving forward. I want people to enjoy the content I make, which is why I shifted away from the overly critical anime essays I started out making. Those videos were quite controversial. In fact, I wound up deleting my Konosuba essay because more people were unsubscribing from my channel after watching it than subscribing to it. Crazy. Didn't even realize that was a metric that could be tracked. Anyway, these are just some of my thoughts on this topic. Feel free to civilly discuss them down below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.